coming in you guys i've got another walk and talk for you guys here today so coming in make yourselves at home we're going to talk about being proud of your mistakes today yes you heard me right be proud of your mistakes you'll find out about that here in just a moment but come on in make yourselves at home it is still very cold outside 33 degrees fahrenheit here in spartanburg south carolina very sunny though i love i love when the sun's out it's beautiful helps to make the cold not so bad when it's uh when it's this sunny outside but going to talk about a really interesting topic here once a uh, few more people get here we'll get started with that i did go live a little bit earlier than i said i would 11 a.m is usually when i hit the start button but i'm like i'm already out here on the trail i might as well go ahead and go live say hi to you guys so welcome welcome hello Mirko and steph and kira Appreciate you guys being here early today. Uh, so if you missed it earlier, I was up pretty early today and I did my ice bath video early today because I did an experiment where I stood out in the frigid temperatures outside for half an hour. So today, this morning, when I got out there, it was 23 degrees Fahrenheit. And so I stood out in that cold, cold weather for 30 minutes. Pretty much let my hands and feet get numb to the point that I couldn't really feel them anymore. The rest of my body did okay, but hands and feet got pretty frigid. So that was three hours ago that I did that. And... Uh, and then I ended it with three and a half minutes in the ice bath, which ironically warmed me up. <laughs> so that was kind of fun. Um, and the only reason I got out was my hands and feet were already so numb that when they got in the water, they became apoplectically numb. So I was like, okay, yeah, I need to get out of this thing. But 30 minutes of cold air exposure, uh, 23 degrees Fahrenheit, 24, something like that. And then 32 degree ice bath for three and a half minutes. And now I'm back out here again, 33 degrees Fahrenheit. I got sun hitting me right now on this walk and talk. So I'm getting lots of cold therapy today. The good news is so far I'm not sleepy. I did have a period of kind of melancholy right after I got done with the uh, the cold exposure to the air and then getting in the ice bath. When I signed off on Instagram, I was just like, whoa, I was just like really chill. And yeah, feel good though. I think I could do a morning, a morning ice bath and probably be okay. It was a nice experiment, let's just put it that way, so. All right, we got about two, three more minutes there. Who else is here today? Linda showed up. She said, here we go. Yes, Linda. I will deliver on the walk and talk. Got a great topic to share with you guys here in a minute. Kelly is here and Cena is here. Mom Era 6 is here. Sheila Anderson here. Thank you all for being here today. We're going to get started with today's topic here. Um, and I guess I should just go ahead and preface today's topic that I feel like people think the worst thing they can do is mess up. And so when you have a fear of messing up, it makes you pause. It makes you hesitate. And so I want to reframe this whole idea of making a mistake, messing up. I want to reframe it because... I feel like you can view it as a negative thing or you can view it as a positive thing. And so I, I, I do think there is a positivity when it comes to mistakes. Mistakes don't have to be this grand negative thing that just ruins your life. So we're going to get into that here in just a moment. I see my friend Sharon just got here and Kay Cola and Marcus. Come on in, guys. We're getting ready to start the walk and talk topic. Plant-Based Jesus is here. Appreciate you guys being here. Please engage in the content, by the way. If you hear me say something or if you have a thought about the topic, 
uh, feel free to write it down there in real time. And then uh, when I go back to scroll through the comments, I will, I will read your comment. Sharon says, good morning. Good morning, Sharon. Cat is here. All right, you guys, let's get to the nitty gritty of today's topic. So the topic, as you see in the pinned post, be proud of your mistakes. Now, this is a tough one for people who are perfectionists. And I've got several friends of mine who are big time perfectionists. Oh, a mistake is the end of the world and everything just kind of crumbles around them. And they think a mistake is about the worst thing you could possibly do. And then there's people in life who they fear even trying to do things out of a fear of messing up and making a mistake. And oh no, what if it's not perfect? You know how many people I have counseled on starting a podcast, writing a book, and their excuse for not having done it yet is, well, what if I mess up? What if I make a mistake? I'm like, you, don't, you think Jimmy Moore hadn't made a mistake on those things? For sure I have. And I've made some big mistakes over the course of my career, but mistakes are not the end of the world. There are things you should be proud of. So I'm going to go over why you should be proud of the mistakes you've made. And I want you to even right now start thinking about mistakes you've made in your life. Maybe it's something that just happened today. Maybe the last week, the last month, or just think about things in your life in general. Moments where you've made mistakes, okay? Okay. As we go over this, that'll be helpful to have that mindful, uh, I guess, recognition of what those things you perceived as mistakes were. And we're going to help you reframe, not seeing it as something as dreadful, but something that instead you should be proud of. All right. This is why you need to be proud. The first point is... Mistakes will let you learn what you value. Because when you mess up, the only reason you feel dread from messing up is because because of some value system in you. And so you learn, when you do these kinds of things, you learn exactly what you're about. You learn what matters to you. You start creating the core belief systems of who you are based on how you feel about the mistakes you made. Now guys, that's cool. Are you getting that? That the reason you have lamentation over things that have happened in your life that you view as mistakes is because you have values that run counter to whatever happened. That shines a big old bright light on your life and it shows your character. And it's great when that happens, you learn something new about yourself that maybe you didn't even know. And that's never a bad thing. So those of you just coming in, we are talking about being proud of your mistakes. Because if you make mistakes and you're proud of them, then you can use them as a catalyst for change. As somebody turns up some music behind me. I don't know what he's doing. That's a mistake. And he seems very proud of it. (laughs) All right, so let's get to the next one. Mistakes, this is a fun one, guys. Mistakes allow you to inspire other people. Yep. Yep. When you mess up, people look at how you respond. If you respond all despondent and upset and distraught, they'll think one thing of you, but... 
if you respond to mistakes and go, you know what, that wasn't great, but we're going to learn from this and we're going to grow. Look at how that changes the dynamic. Oh, I'm hearing people talking. That's why I'm making sure I don't get run over. <laughs> but you inspire people when you do that. How cool is that? To use your mistakes as a means of inspiring other people. I'm going to let them get by me. Hey, guys. Because I ain't jogging. I'm walking. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, I think we devalue that. That there's something to be said about trying something and not succeeding, failing, making a mistake, and then bouncing back from that. I think in, it's easy to make an analogy to the sports world where an NBA basketball player goes three for 20 from the field, scores a career low eight points, and is all despondent. And it would be easy to say, wow, look at all the mistakes that I made from doing that. And then the very next game, they have a 50-point game, hit seven three-pointers, da-da-da-da-da. Happens all the time. You see a player have a bad night, make some mistakes, turn over the ball, da-da-da-da-da. And then what happens? They bounce back. And they have a great game and people are inspired. So think about the bounce back ability from your mistakes. When you're making a mistake, say, you know what? This one sucked, but what I'm about to do next, watch out world, it's gonna shock you. And that's a great way to look at it. So again, we're going over all the reasons why you should be proud of your mistakes. And the next one, Mistakes, you guys, are just merely lessons and learning opportunities in life. We think that we're supposed to have life all figured out. We do. We think that if we're living our lives, that everything has to be 100% perfect all the time. Everything has to always work out. If things don't work out, oh no, what's wrong with me? And we make it a character flaw. Uh-uh. Mistakes are the way you learn. They're the way you teach yourself. Think about every big invention that's ever happened. From the light bulb, to the airplane, to the computer. Do you think they got it exactly right on the first try? Uh-uh. They didn't. They had to try. Well, that didn't work. All right, well, I learned something from this experience from this mistake. Now let me apply that knowledge to the next attempt and the next and the next and the next. And when you do that, you grow in your knowledge. This is why I tell people, start sooner than later because you want to get the bad mistakes out of the way first. If you never make a mistake, how do you ever feel fulfilled in the knowledge that you've gained. You guys think I've been a great podcaster from day one? No. Day one, I was like, welcome back to the Living La Vida Low Carb, what was the name of the show again? Uh, low Carb Show. It was bad. It was really bad. But that mistake now has gotten me to the point where I do it very easily. Same with, same with writing books. My very first book I ever wrote was in 2005. I don't even talk about it. It's so bad. I never mentioned the title. It's on Amazon if you want to look it up. Good luck. Because I hide it. I don't want anybody to find it. But it was so bad that I learned from it. And I saw it as an opportunity it was a lesson on what not to do for a book, number one. And so my second book was a little better. I am proud of that one. Because uh, the second book sold 10,000 copies as an independent author. And that got the attention of the publisher, which I then went on to write all the books you know me for. 
cholesterol clarity, keto clarity, complete guided fasting, all those. And so I wouldn't have gotten to keto clarity and the complete guide to fasting without first the mistake of that very first book I wrote. And look, I don't think mistake in this context means useless. Mistake means, okay, it could have been better. You had to learn. And when you know better, you do better. And I grew from it. And I know I see uh, several of you on here right now. I know you're starting new adventures in your own kind of business ventures. And you're going to feel like, wow, I don't know what I'm doing. I feel like I'm messing up. You're not messing up. You're doing the exact prescriptiveness that needs to happen for you to be successful. For you to learn from and grow from those mistakes you're making now. Don't let it psych you out. All right, guys. So I'm going over a list of things that you should be proud of about your mistakes. I don't think enough of us are proud of making mistakes. We see mistakes as a character flaw. Oh, no. What's wrong with me? Oh, I should have, would have, could have done better. Blah, blah, blah. Stop doing that to yourself. There are great, great reasons why you should be proud of your mistakes. And we're talking about them here today. The next one is mistakes. Oh, this is a big one. Mistakes will teach you forgiveness. Because once you make a mistake, that humbles you to the point that when you see someone else make a mistake, you don't mock them. You don't chide them. You don't try to tell them how they could do it better. You have forgiveness in your heart. You have a certain level of empathy and compassion for those people. It's a big one, guys. Be proud of your mistakes because they teach you how to forgive. Gosh, we need this in our culture right now more than ever. A lot of vindictiveness out there. And I see it in my work all the time. There's people that just like blast the crap out of me in comments. There's no forgiveness. There's no compassion. It's just full bore. You're the devil. And of course, the mistake that I've made is I haven't lost weight to the degree that they think I should. And so those things, those things will humble you. Those things will make you have a more forgiving heart. So that's a big one that you should be proud of. You grow humility and you grow a heart for forgiveness. That's a big deal. The next thing that you should be proud of about mistakes is you learn and you gain knowledge. Knowledge is power is how the saying goes. And with great power, you're able to do things. Well, guess what? You can't have that power until you go through the process of learning and making mistakes. I promise you every big company, every product that you know and love and use, I guarantee you all of those companies, they didn't just roll it out in the first phase and it was a big hit. No, they roll it out and Nobody's buying it. Oh, crap. Well, that was a mistake. All right. Well, let's learn from it. Let's gain that knowledge. All right. Let's apply the knowledge we have. Now let's make it better and then better and then better. Look at what Coca-Cola did in the mid-1980s. I'm uh, all apologies for all people under the age of 40 that you might not know this story. But in the 1980s, Coca-Cola... I think it was like 90 something years, the same formula for Coca-Cola. And in the mid eighties, they got the idea, hey, let's shake up the brand a little bit. Let's roll out what they called new Coke. So they had this new flavor and sweetener and all this stuff that they wanted to roll out. And they rolled it out and it was a big marketing mistake. In fact, it is taught in marketing schools now as the biggest mistake uh, in American product history 
was New Coke. And so they do a whole class just on New Coke and why it was a horrible mistake. But what? guess what they did? They got rid of it. They learned from the mistake. And not only did they bring the original formula back, they gave it a name, Coca-Cola Classic. So they were able to rebrand it. And uh, Mary's like, New Coke was nasty. It was very nasty. It tasted like a really bad watered down cough syrup added Coke. <laughs> it was just nasty. It was nasty. Um, and so they brought back Coca-Cola, but they called it Coca-Cola Classic. So it kind of raised the profile of the image again and they survived and they learned from that knowledge. They gained great knowledge knowing, hey, our fans don't want us to change. And look, they almost did it again when they brought out Coke Zero. When they brought out Coke Zero, they were gonna use that to replace Diet Coke. But then all these fans of Diet Coke went, don't you dare take away Diet Coke. They loved that nasty flavor of the Diet Coke. <laughs> um, so now they sell both. And they were able to learn from the knowledge of the new Coke experience. All right, if fans like the Diet Coke, we're not getting rid of Diet Coke. That would have been suicide because I think that's their, that's one of their top sellers now is Diet Coke. So a little bit of an application from the business world for you guys. Next up, reasons you should be proud of your mistakes. Mistakes will teach you how to take responsibility. Now, this is one that's going to have to apply to those people that actually take responsibility because not everybody does. But if you make a mistake and you show contrition, a lot of people are very willing to give you another chance if you mess up. And so if you take responsibility, that is a big deal in this day and age. Because a lot of people, they abdicate responsibility. They never accept the mistakes that they make. And then they never change. And people notice that. So it does teach you that great application of uh, taking responsibility. Next up. Mistakes will pro provide you with a reference point. Because maybe the mistake you made, you didn't realize that it was a bad thing until it happened. And so now you have a reference point of, oop, not doing that again. I've run into that even in my own business. I've had ideas for podcasts. I did this one podcast because I wanted to branch out from just talking about uh, nutrition and health all the time. I created this brand and this podcast called One More Thing with Jimmy. And so, talked about different things that were just of interest to me. Well, that was a mistake. <laughs> it was a mistake to think that people would want to hear that on a podcast. So, I used it now as a reference of, okay, how much would people be interested in me talking about just random topics that are interesting to me? So that's what was kind of made me hesitate doing these walk and talks because that's kind of what I do here is I just talk about whatever's interesting to me outside of nutrition and health. Uh, but you guys have shown me, hey, you do like it. So maybe it wasn't the wasn't the fact that I talked about new things. It just didn't apply in a in a podcast setting, but it very much applies here on a live video. So I learned I use it as a reference. Next up, mistakes will help you develop compassion. So very similar to the one earlier about developing forgiveness. You get such compassion for people when you yourself go through a humbling experience like that of messing up. Nobody wants to mess up. Nobody wants to have that happen to them. And yet it does happen to them. And so once you go through that, you develop compassion, a true care and concern for other people. And mistakes will do that. And look, 
big mistakes will ramp up all of these things I'm talking about. I mean, big whopper mistakes. All of these things that I'm talking about with being proud of, of your mistakes, all of them apply when you do a big one. But they apply to the little ones, but maybe you don't always recognize them as readily as you would with the big ones. All right, next up. Mistakes will invite you to make better choices. Yes. Because when you mess up, you messed up because you made a poor choice. At least in the context of whatever it was you messed up on. And the next time you'll make a better choice. And that's knowledge. That's power. That's, that's taking what life brings you and applying it. And the better choices will always serve you well moving forward into the future. All right, guys, one more way that you should be proud of your mistakes. You should be proud of your mistakes because they help you learn how to be resilient. Resilience is underrated in our culture. We expect people to just always be on point, always be right, never mess up. If you mess up, you're horrible, you're a failure. No. Show me somebody who's messed up and gotten back up again and messed up again and gotten back up again and messed up again and gotten back up again and then succeeded. I want that person on my side. That's the person that was able to overcome every obstacle. That was the person that when push came to shove, they were going to bounce back no matter what came at them. Resilience, you guys. And look with what I'm doing with the ice baths all the time. That's building up resilience. You do hard things. You put yourself yourself in situations where you have to be pushed to your brink. And you survive. And you thrive. And you overcome. You're unstoppable. That's resilience. You're able to do it. So be proud, you guys. Be proud of the mistakes that you've made. I know that's so hard to wrap your head around because you're like, no, a mistake was bad and the ramifications were bad and other people were impacted and blah, blah, blah. Yes, all of those things are true. All of them. But where do you go from there? Do you just sit there and wallow in the upsetness of it all? Do you make yourself feel bad about the mistakes for the rest of your life? There are people who do that, by the way. Or do you take ownership of it and say, you know what? I might have messed up, but it's going to make me better. It's going to make me a better person. It's going to make me better at my job. It's going to make me better... In my relationships, it's making me better. And so if you take on that mantra of I'm going to be better because of this, it changes everything. All right, you guys, I've been talking a very long time today. I want to hear what you have to say about this. Number one, are you proud of your mistakes? And if so, why? And then number two... If you're not proud of your mistakes, how do you feel about your mistakes? Do you see them as character flaws? Do you see them as something negative? What is your view of a mistake? And there's no right or wrong answers. Just share what you think. And I want to read on the air what you say. So uh, let me scroll back up, see if any comments came in. You guys have been very quiet on me today. Walk and talk is hard if you... If I'm the only one walking and talking and you guys are total, totally mute. Are you resonating with this topic today? Please share below your thoughts about this. You learn from your mistakes and you grow from them, says Kelly. Yeah. Look, if you don't learn from them and grow from them, then that mistake was in vain. 
I don't think it's an accident when we have a mistake happen in our lives. I'll tell you about one in my career. In the late 2000s, it was just a few years after I started Living La Vida Low Carb, the blog, and I had just started the podcast. I heard from this lady that said, hey, I've got this low carb plan. It's helping a lot of women lose weight and it's called Kimkins. I was like, okay, tell me about it. Oh, it's a low carb plan and I've got support for them on a forum and uh, lots of girls are losing lots of weight. Okay, cool. So I start promoting it, helping her out because I'm all about helping people. And next thing I know, uh, somebody starts doing an investigation into this lady and they find out she's a fraud, that she had used pictures from a Russian model as her profile pic and the woman herself, Heidi Diaz was her name or is her name, I don't know if she's still alive, um, was like a 350 pound woman and she was literally just bilking people out of money. Well, as soon as I saw all of that, that was a mistake. I knew it right away. And I went right on the blog telling people, stop going there. I had to apologize. And I learned an invaluable lesson from that, that I need to truly vet out anything that I promote before I promote it. Now keep in mind, this was early in my career. So I had to learn that the hard way. And I lost a lot of people who trusted me. They, they were like, well, you should have known better. You messed up. So we're gonna move on. And I, like I said, I lost a lot of followers that way. Um, but it was a big mistake early on. And then one other mistake that I made in my podcasting career was back in 2012, right at 10 years ago, I was contacted and I got tons of requests to be on other people's podcasts all the time. And I got contacted by this doctor and he's like, hey, I want you to come on my show. I'm all about ketogenic diets and the cholesterol hypothesis being bunk, blah, blah, blah great. So we set it up and I get on there and I do the whole interview and everything about the interview was cool. Pretty typical, pretty typical interview as always. So it comes out a couple weeks later and next thing I know, I'm getting all of these messages from people on Facebook and people posting all over all over various social media, Jimmy Moore is a racist. And it's like, what? <laughs> what? And the person who interviewed me called himself doctor. What he did not reveal is that his name was David Duke. Yes, that David Duke. And so I didn't recognize when he sent over the request that it was that David Duke. I just saw doctor and it threw me off. So now anytime somebody wants to interview Jimmy Moore, I am looking them up, up upside down in between to make sure I know everything about who I'm talking to. So those are two big mistakes that I made that I'm now proud of because I do better by my followers when I look for sponsors and look for things I promote and I do better for myself and the people getting the information about any interviews that I do on other people's shows. Was it great in the moment? It sucked in the moment of both of those, but I was able to rise above them and overcome them because of some of the lessons we've talked about here today. All right. You guys talk. Let's see what you got. Father Cheeseburger checking in. Hey, I hadn't seen you in forever, Scott. Welcome, welcome, man. 
Glad you're still around. Mary says, I'm driving, so it's hard to chat. Yes. Yes, if you're driving, please don't text and drive. My friend Classy Keto is in the house. I'm unstoppable. Learn to forgive yourself first. We are all still human. Yes. Yes, I think when we make mistakes, we can sometimes be our own worst critic about the mistakes. Other people don't even have to loathe us for the mistake. We loathe ourselves. So I love that you have that attitude. That you're unstoppable. That's awesome. But I'm not surprised with what I know about you already, Melissa. Cena says, I guess I have never thought of being proud of them. I've always beaten myself up for them. And that's why I'm doing this walk and talk today, Cena. Thank you for sharing that, by the way. Because most people don't. Most people see it as a moral failure, as a character flaw when you mess up. Something's wrong with them. I'm telling you, it's a rite of passage to make mistakes and then to overcome those mistakes and learn from them and grow from them and become all these qualities that I talked about here today. You can't get those qualities until you fuck things rolly up, right? So mess up. I'm not saying it's great. I'm not saying it feels good to make mistakes. It's not. I just gave you two very vulnerable ones from my career. Those were not fun. But I can look back at them now and go, you know what? I got better because of those mistakes. And I can now be proud of those mistakes because but for them, I wouldn't make the kind of choices I make now. So it was a good thing ultimately. In the moment, really sucked. But hindsight, pretty darn awesome. Oh, Scott remembers the Kim Kins days. <laughs> uh, I remember that incident with that lady so well. I was active on your website. You didn't lose me, brother. Well, I'm glad. There were a lot of people that thought I was complicit with her and conspiring to scam people. I'm like, not me. <laughs> it wasn't me. She ended up uh, getting deposed and... I think she had a court trial and everything. It was, it was a big deal. Just goes to show you there are shysters and shady people everywhere. You always have to be on the lookout for that. Um, Bulletproof says some people never learn from their mistakes and they go through life learning very little. You're right. It's because... If you think making a mistake is a bad thing, then you're going to shift blame for the mistakes to everybody but you. That's human nature. That's almost inevitable that that's going to happen. Which is why I think this reframing of being proud of your mistakes gives it a positive spin. Gives you a new way to think about it that maybe you didn't think about before. I've been online for 18 years and you don't last this long without messing up and making some mistakes. Uh, I can tell you in the publishing world, I'll, I'll tell you some inside scoop. I don't, I hadn't really talked about this publicly yet. You get in the dirt today. So I got signed by Victory Bell Publishing in 2012, my first book with them was Cholesterol Clarity in 2013, then Keto Clarity 2014, Ketogen Cookbook 2015, and then The Complete Guide to Fasting in 2016. So after those four succession of books, all of them did very well, I went to my publisher and I said, hey, I want to write about, and I gave them a few other topics. They're like, nope. Keto is still hot. You're, our, you're one of our star authors. Go write another keto book. And I was like, I don't really have anything else to say about keto. But they insisted. And they're like, we'll let you write some of the other books. 
One of the books I wanted to write, by the way, you guys, and I still want to write it, is an expose on the weight loss industry. All the conniving tactics that they use from the food industry to the pharmaceutical industry to things like Weight Watchers and all that stuff. Jen Craig. Um, expose how they're just money-making machines. That they're not really trying to help people lose weight. So... I was under contract to write that book with Victory Belt, but they kept making me write keto books. You'll get to write that when the keto trend dies down. So my last book, uh, keto book was in 2019, Keto Clarity Cookbook. And then I went away on sabbatical for six months and then I came back from sabbatical and in March, 2020, and then the whole world shut down for basically the last two years. So I didn't have any new books. I've got a new book coming soon, but didn't have any new books in that time. And in that time, I was reaching out to the publisher. Hey, I'd like to write on that weight loss expose book. I had a biohacking book in the works with a medical doctor, all under contract. And they dropped me as a, as an author. Um, partly because the keto trend had died off. And their excuse was, well, your last few books didn't do as well as your first few books did. I'm like, yeah, no kidding. Um, I told you guys in 2016 that the keto trend was gonna die off because it was gonna be too populated with too many books and people talking about it, it's gonna be saturated. Let me move on to the next thing and we'll forge that path. So my mistake was that I didn't push back on that harder. I could have easily said, look, I have earned the right to write whatever book I want. I had three international best-selling books in a row with Ketogen Cookbook or Keto Clarity, Ketogen Cookbook and Complete Guide to Fasting. All three of them hit international bestseller status. In fact, the... Uh, Complete Guide to Fasting hit the Wall Street Journal bestsellers list, number seven. And so that was a mistake that I could have felt bad about. I don't, by the way. I have taken it now. And the way I'm being proud of that is I have earned the right to write whatever I want to write about. And so my next book is on... Uh, overcoming challenges in your in your life, your belief system, childhood trauma that I'm writing with my best friend called the One Step Deeper Journal, The Foundations. It's set to come out here within the next couple of weeks and I'm self-publishing it and I've created a new imprint that I'm going to publish all my books on. I'm also trying to invite a few other authors who want to write books I'm going to help them so if you're interested in a book reach out to me and we'll talk but that's taking a mistake and making yourself proud because I don't need them anymore I'm going to be successful as an author with or without them and if you guys knew how much money they took from authors it would make you disgusted People think authors get all this money for books. Uh uh. You get pennies compared to what the what the publisher gets. The publisher gets the vast majority of that money. And that's the dirty little secret. So don't think you want to be with a major publisher necessarily. It was fun. Definitely helped raise my profile a little more. And I had great success. But I learned some lessons from the mistakes of that that will help me now moving forward. Kira says, I have a really hard time forgiving myself and there's no pride in that either. No, no. And look, if you mess up, you've got to move on. But a lot of people, they do. They mess up and they mull over it and they mull over it and they mull over it and they mull over it. Until they get to the point in their life that they're like, why is my life so miserable? Because you didn't move on after you messed up. 
And you can. You can. We can we can be our own worst enemies beating ourselves up. Or we can be our biggest cheerleader. You get to make that choice. Mary says, I would not have found this community if it hadn't if I hadn't made mistakes in my medical care. Yeah. I interview a lot of people, Mary, on my podcast that the reason they found keto and carnivore was precisely what you're talking about. They tried so much of allopathic medicine, tried on and on and on, over and over and over, doing all the things they said to do, and they weren't getting better. And so that's what helped them, was coming to a more nutritional approach, more functional medicine approach, natural foods approach. That's how a lot of us find this, because we expected to find health in that system, and there was never going to be health in that system, sadly. Uh, Sharon says, tell us what you think of the old saying, whatever makes you making mistakes only makes you stronger. Yeah, the Kelly Clarkson. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Um, yes and no. Because I think there's some people that can be pushed to the point of near death and it will kill them. And then there's other people who get pushed like that and they push back and they get stronger. So I don't, I don't think it's axiomatic with all due respect to Kelly Clarkson for everyone. If it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. I don't think it's across the board. I think some people, when, when life pushes them, it hurts them and they never recover. And they're never able to overcome the perceived mistakes that they made. And that's a shame. It's why I talk so openly about mindset type of stuff. It's why I do a mindset podcast, the One Step Deeper podcast. Um, these things matter. And the only, thing you can, only way you can work on them is to work on them. It does, doesn't just happen. Uh, Marcus says, what's wrong with spreading your message to everybody, including uh, the listeners of David Duke? Look, that was one of the arguments I made at the time was, hey, his listeners might want to learn about this stuff. And, oh, people hated that. They're like, oh, you're just white supremacist, racist. I'm like, oh, my God. So I get it. People have thoughts about what they think about him and look I have no thoughts about him at all other than okay he did some horrible things I get it and his associations with horrible people I get it but it was not a willingness on my part to seek out this former grand wizard from the Ku Klux Klan that wasn't I never would have agreed to the interview if I had known that which is why it was a mistake But, to your point, yes, those people got good information about keto and about cholesterol. The problem is, when I was on, we just did the straight interview. People said, oh, did you hear the, 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 you know, the replay? I'm like, no. Oh, his commercials were full of all kind of weird stuff. I'm like, that didn't air when I was doing the interview, guys. So... Again, vet out the people before you go on their podcast. And so I do that now. Um, Linda says the uh, weight loss industry exposés would be a great book. Yes, I even had a great title that I had under contract with Victory Belt before they dropped me. Um, Weight loss, white lies. And technically, technically that was breach of contract on their part to, uh, to just cut off my contract and cancel those out. I was under contract, which means legally I could go after them. Now I've not done that and probably won't be doing that. I'm going to go do the book on my own, probably make more from it from a financial perspective, doing it on my own than I would with them anyway. So 
maybe it was a blessing in disguise. Maybe why I'm proud of that mistake is that was my out to be able to move on and do my own books. We're about to find out. Please go get the One Step Deeper Journal of the Foundations when it comes out. It's very soon coming out. I'll let you guys know. Um, Bulletproof says, I've never looked into how publishing works. What's the pros to self-publishing? Well, self-publishing is easy. Pretty much compared to when I first self-published in 2005 and then again in 2009... Uh, since then, the technology is way better. There's a lot more options. You really can't tell the difference if the people do it the right way, which is why it's taken so long for my new book is some of the first drafts look like a self-published book. I'm like, nope, we are not coming out with a book that looks like it was self-published. I have a very high quality standard for my books and this ain't it. So, um, if you have a low following following that probably is a reason why you need to self-publish plus get your feet wet that's how I got noticed to begin with was I got my feet wet feet wet self-publishing a couple of books and then the second one did really well and that got the attention of the publisher um some people don't know how to learn no they don't um professor Jimmy (laughs) no don't put that on me Melissa says, yes, about something. That's what's so hard when I'm scrolling slowly. I'll see a comment like that. I'm like, what is she saying yes to? I said a lot of good things. I'm just going to assume, Melissa, you meant yes to everything I've said. So thank you. (laughs) Uh, Can't believe that happened to you. Yeah, with the David Duke thing. It did, man. It did. And thankfully, my bud, Sean Croxton... And he's a wonderful podcaster, an African-American gentleman. Been friends with him for a very long time. He said, Jimmy, I want to help you out. I said, okay, what? He said, I want to bring you on my podcast. And let's address it head on. I was like, let's go, man. And literally the first question he asked me was, Jimmy Moore, are you a racist? (laughs) I was like, well, thank you for asking that question, Mr. Croxton. And uh, we had a nice conversation after that. But, yeah, it was bad. But you move on, you grow from it, and that's what I did, and it was wonderful. All right, guys, let me pop off of here for now. Thank you so much for joining me on this walk and talk. Be proud of your mistakes, and hopefully now you realize why you should be and what that looks like. But thanks for joining in. I'm going to go enjoy the rest of this beautiful Sunday It's still very frigid here in South Carolina, but it's very gorgeous with the sunshine. I'm getting a little warm, so that's good. But uh, thanks for watching. I'll be back again real soon.